Welcome back, everyone. Today we are talking about fuel system. I know I've made a video, I think, last week about it, but it's incomplete. It's Today I'm going to try to complete it. We're talking about um, search tanks and various different setups that you can possibly do. Um, also want to give you an update. We finished up another 2.2 liter. Um, this came out pretty good. We got a fresh block from the dealer, um, and this is a 85.25 millimeter pistons, Wisco. It has manly uh, 94 millimeter uh, billet crank, and it has something that we are recently uh, trying to use, uh, starting to use. Um, we have it's uh, a Cali ultra reinforced rods with the ARP uh, 145 ultra bolts. Should be should be making some jam. Uh, I think we're gonna put a uh, Zona 95 or 105 on that Morrison fabrication uh, manifold. All right, so I got the fuel system, search tank and everything set up. So let's go over the components first. This is a search tank, not all search tank look like this, but this is one type of search tank. This is for my old setup, this is another type. Uh, and this is another type. And there are other um, search tanks as well in the market, which um, you can actually just Google it and you'll see that they're square ones, various companies make them. Um, I personally, when I had a, uh, a LS2 C6 before, I actually had a search tank made that was fitting right back of the light. Um, it was custom made, but um, let's talk about these components. So these are search tanks. Uh, let's go over a little bit um, of what the difference is. So obviously the size, um, this is I think a three liter or four liter, like a gallon, I'm not sure. But this has an internal pump, three of them, pump one, pump two, pump three. There's three internal pumps. So three of these kind of pumps, and we're going to go over various type of different kind of pumps as, as well, um, and or this kind of pump. This is an AEM320. This one looks like this, but it's very different. It doesn't have a pump inside. This is main, made for external pumps, so uh, pumps that are living outside of the tank. And this is also an external pump one. Um, but it, it looks a little different, made, fit, made to fit in a certain uh, vehicle or certain areas. So they actually make this in this form, which is internally, it has pumps, which we actually put on few cars. So these are fuel pumps. There's different kinds. I'm going to go over that as well. This is a fuel filter. Um, we always use the bigger type fuel filters, not the small ones. This is a fuel rail, as everybody recognizes. Um, we're going to go over what this is in a little bit. And this is a hardware kit. And this is also a type of fuel uh, pump. And this is a hop switch. Let's talk about how this works, and that'll lead to why you would want it. So typically, you would have a stock hanger, and you would have one of these kind of pumps uh, in your stock hanger. And they, these are called pickup pumps. They, because they usually sit in a fuel tank uh, like this with their pickup uh, end on the bottom and the delivery end at the top and it basically uh, makes the fuel go up towards the fuel line and same thing with this, it sits like that. And you can tell because of the way they're connected. And these are external pumps. I'm going to go over how they work. So you have one of these in your... Uh, fuel tank, fuel, your stock uh, fuel tank, and it basically feeds uh, maybe through a fuel uh, filter or whatever, uh, feeds your fuel rail, you have injectors here, and it comes out through your fuel pressure regulator, uh, stock one or aftermarket, doesn't matter, and the return line goes back into your tank, and just say this is your tank, comes from here, goes back there. 
So what a search tank does is it takes, say this is your stock hanger, it feeds the search tank, one of these things. So through one of these fittings, it'll put fuel in. And you know, th this is a small orifice, so it's gonna fill up very quickly. What happens to the excess um, fuel is when the pressure gets too high, it'll go back uh, to your stock tank. So this is bigger, so you'll see. So the stock hanger feeds this, and there's another line going back to the stock hanger, okay? So you have a cycle going on, coming in here. When it gets too level, uh, it's too high, or the pressure's too high, it goes back to the stock hanger again. You have other two fittings. Either this is a external pump, so you have a fuel pump like this attached here that takes the fuel, pressurized fuel from here through an external pump and into your fuel rail. What that does is it creates, and, and I'm sorry, and the fuel rail returns uh, back to the, the search tank. Um, so it forms another cycle using two different fittings. So it has two cycles. It's continuously being fed and feeding the stock uh, fuel uh, tank and it's continuously uh, being fed and feeding the fuel rail. So you never run out of fuel. There is no cavitation, there's no lack of fuel, nothing. Even though this is small, but it's constantly being fed by one of these pumps. Um, this will actually work with a stock uh, pickup pump in your thing. You really don't need a big pump to feed a surge tank. The reason why you would want something like this is because again, it's, it increases the efficiency of any pump that you put in the system um, and it makes sure the the fuel rail is always full of fuel there's no gaps or anything the fuel uh, injectors are always being fed now the different types of uh, system the search tanks you can run again internal so you'll still have always a pickup always inside the stock tank and it'll feed say two more pumps inside this uh, surge tank that's built in here like it's literally sitting in like that and through these fittings it's feeding the rail and the tank and the stock tank uh, this one has three they will all three will feed the rail this is actually going in our uh, the eclipse that's aiming for over a thousand now this is an internally uh, uh, pumped uh, surge tank and it would have these or this kind of pump inside and it would feed the rail and it would feed also feed the uh, regular tank. Now these two, on the other hand, are does not have any of these pumps inside. So you run a line through one of these. This is a Bosch uh, 44. It sits outside of this somewhere, you know, in the back or, you know, some people put it in the front, doesn't matter. It's in line, this exists outside. So it feeds here. Uh, and it feeds the rail through here. You could put two of them with a Y, still from the same uh, surge tank, and, and you know it'll feed your rail very well. These are very, very noisy. I personally only would use them in a box or when they're outside underneath the car, never inside. Again, I'm old, I really don't like noises and things like that. So, this has internally pumped, uh, this is internally pumped surge tank. You don't want all, if you're, if you're daily driving your car or if you're not strictly drag racing, you don't want all your pumps on all the time. Um, you basically want one pump on and the main one on in the uh, stock hanger and you will trigger the other one either through ECU or hop switch. So which brings us to hop switch. So this is a hop switch. All this is is you attach vacuum here, it's programmed and you can adjust the programming through a screw here. You would attach um, a relay or directly works too, but I uh, suggest that you use a relay. But this will be connected to the battery or a 12 volt source and the other source will be uh, to the uh, pump that you want to trigger. Soon as it the car hits a certain amount of boost that you pre-programmed it, it will close the circuit and uh, connect and close the loop on the pump so it will turn on 
only at that boost level or higher. So that's basically what a hop switch does. It uh, allows you to turn on pumps with certain levels of boost that you pre-programmed it. Um, also want to talk about your hard wiring. Now this is the kit that I use. It's very good. This is a Hella relay kit. Um, also a 30 amp fuse holder. Basically what happens is, as you can see, there are, well, we don't use the middle wire, but there are two uh, thick wires. One goes to the battery, the other one goes to whatever you're trying to switch on. The thin wires, it, it's color coded, but it really doesn't matter, is the signal that you want to use to turn this relay on, which means to turn the pump on. So the thinner wires connect to either stock, uh, stock signal, if you are trying to have the pump on all the time, or the hop switch, if you want the hop switch to trigger it, or ECU, aftermarket ECU, secondary pump circuit, if you want that. Um, you always want to do this because some of the lines, on the, especially the stock one, uh, is, does not support high amperage. And I know for a fact the Volvo 450 is like 15 or something like that amperage. And if you have two pumps running uh, you know, externally like that, a wide open throttle, you're seeing like 30 amps, and then you have two more pumps. Unlike in this one, it's, you know, we got two pumps in the surge tank, and sorry, two pumps in the um, stock tank, and this has three pumps in it. So at wide open throttle, at, you know, like high boost, all three of the pumps being on, you're looking at over close to 70 amps. You know, that's a lot of uh, current being drawn. Luckily, this has the, the electrical system for it, so we're not worried. Now, usually, uh, if I have one or two pumps, this is what I would use. But something like this, uh, you, I actually invest in a, a fuse box. So this is very, this specific one is very good. I really like it. So I really like this one. This is uh, weatherproof. You basically put your uh, relays here and your fuses here and you connect them in the back and they really have really good connectors. They're also weather um, proof. So I, I do all my uh, fuel pumps uh, and you know relays, everything that I want, on, basically any accessory that I want that didn't come with the car that I want to control or make a separate line for through something like this. This has six, uh, there's eight, 12, you know, 16, whatever you want. And this is considerably cheap and it's a pretty good material. Um, it's heavy built. So that's basically, in a nutshell, uh, what a surge tank is. Um, and I hope that this helped anyone who's looking for it. All right, so the fuel system, basically that's what it is. Obviously there's various variations of that. Um, I'm just telling you what I typically use, what's easy. Uh, you know, it's, you could buy the parts, uh, you don't have to make anything, just, you know, lines. I uh, just want to give you an update on what's happening as well in the, um, in the shop. So, this is going to be tuned next week. Everything is done. Um, I wanted to tell you what happened with this, which made me actually do this video. Trunk. So Nick actually has this fuel cell. So it's a fuel cell and it's a replacement for his stock uh, fuel tank. And this is purposely purposeful built. There's many, many different kinds. The one that he has is made for an external pump, um, but it doesn't have a gravity uh, feed. Typically the ones that are made for external pumps have a gra gravity bleed. So he just has one pump underneath this, uh, outside of his car, uh, inline pump, the Bosch 44 that I showed you earlier. And basically what's happening is when I'm, when I did wide open throttle on low boost is fine, but then at a certain uh, RPM, it just would drop fuel pressure because the stock, the one inline pump isn't enough. And I have to tell you guys that it's, Inline pumps are delivery pumps. They're not made to pick up uh, the fuel from uh, 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 a tank or whatever. 
and they're not going to do well just by itself without a gravity feed. If you have a gravity feed, which is that little uh, indentation or, or protrusion on the bottom of the, the tank, the cell, the fuel cell, which the fuel builds up in, and then basically it's the gravity does the work and it's feeding back of the supply pump. Um, if you don't have that, you're going to run into this issue. So in a typical world, in a perfect world, I would have him also do a surge tank or change this island uh, to the one that has a drop-in filter, I'm sorry, drop-in uh, pickup pump. Um, but he didn't have that. So we built one for him. We added the uh, bulkhead fitting and then we added uh, a, a 1450 and then immediately all his problems went away. The car even starts better. Everything is just, you know, just, just good right now. So I just wanted to show you guys um, the setup. And also wanted to thank you guys for, uh, you know, tuning in, showing the love. Just, you know, motivates me to do more of these things. And, and it is so much, so much for me to share. Just don't have the time. Um, for example, like I've been dealing with this. Everything is fine. Steph's car. Everything is fine. Then his rear control arm went out. Uh, we fixed that. Um, that there was a heat issue. We actually used um, this rated for 2000 uh, degrees Fahrenheit heat shielding. Um, and then uh, we realized that the top needs work too. This is starting to go, so we got to change that. You know, little things, but he's ready to tune on the dyno. We just hit like 28, 29 pounds on the street, and it was just crazy. Um, so much, so much air. Like, I had to increase at 10 psi, I had to increase volumetric efficiency like 125, 130 just to get enough uh, fuel in there. Just, just that turbo moves a lot of air. Um, anyway, so thank you guys for uh, watching this. Please don't forget to subscribe. It really does help. Until next time, uh, thank you again.